Hey, we're Plaza Home Care. Today, myself and Andy will be sharing tips we've learned over the years to help you in your day-to-day -day life. Let's jump into the first tip. Here we are in compression. Um, if you've wore these before, you know it can be very difficult to get them on um, without any aids. Um, a really good trick to know that will definitely help is if you reach inside of the hose and grab on either side of the heel, all you need to do is pinch and turn the excess inside out. Now you have that foot section kind of inside and watch how easy this goes on over my sock and pants if we just pull it straight on. Thanks, Elijah, for that great tip. Here's another great tip. Um, a lot of times with CPAP mask, you have a quick disconnect or a quick connect little coupler that would be attached to a specific mask. It makes it easy to connect and disconnect from that mask, but what happens if you buy another mask? If you do, those don't fit together. So it's very important that when we have a CPAP mask and we buy a new one, that the end of the hose is squishy before it goes onto the new mask. Thank you for that tip, Andy. Now let's transition into mobility where we have several tips for you. The first one we're gonna talk about is transitioning a quad cane from either left or right hand. So right now it is truly offset for it to be a right hand use. But if we push that pin and swivel that base around, we can switch that to be a left handed. Now let's talk about where to adjust the height of a cane. As you can see, this cane currently is pretty low. Um, there's not, not much bend in my arm. Um, you generally want to have it where you would align a wristwatch. So I will adjust it to there. And now as you can see, if I put my hands down by my side, it is at that wristwatch level and I have a good bend in my arm. Now let's look at a few tips for walkers. A good thing to keep in mind is if you are struggling to get in and out of doorways in your home, you can flip these wheels around on either side, which will make your walker slightly more narrow so you can traverse those narrow doorways. Now, while we're still on walkers, let's talk about tennis balls and ski glides. We all know about tennis balls. They generally fit on those two back posts of our walker and they generally help for a smoother ride. Um, they do tend to wear out fairly quickly and they generally pick up some debris from inside. However, if you're mainly using your walker inside, these are a great solution for that. Now glides are true ski glides. They do fit in those back posts and they function very similarly to the uh, tennis balls. Um, they allow you to truly push it smoother. Um, they're a bit more durable, so they don't wear out as quick and they don't tend to pick up as much debris. Now let's look at a walker with four wheels and a seat, better known as a rollator. This is a very mobile unit, so you do have to be careful it does come with brakes. Um, you can lock these brakes by pushing down on them, which will allow you to safely turn around and sit down. Now, over time, we generally see people undoing these and wanting to roll backwards. This is not safe and we do not recommend that. This is just primarily to be used as a seat. You do not want to roll yourself back and forth in it due to where your weight truly sits. And once you have gained your strength to get back up, you can stand up, release those brakes, and then continue moving. A thing we see on some knee scooters is the knee pad being slightly offset towards one leg. This is fairly easy to adjust. All you have to do is flip that base around. And 
And as you can see, now it's offset towards that left leg being injured. Now follow me to the next step. You need to be careful when you're approaching bumps such as thresholds for a doorway. As you come close to them, you would like to hit them square. And if you don't, it could yank the handles from you. Thanks for some more great tips, Elijah. Let's look at wheelchairs. Uh, a couple of different tips and tricks with wheelchairs. First, I'm gonna start with showing you how to remove the footrest. If you zoom in down here, most footrests are gonna have a latch here. You can pull, if you watch my thumb, from the inside. They will then swing away towards the outside. You can then remove them from these hanging pins on the side. Quick trick, if you look for these two screws, that is your latch that's always gonna be on the top and the inside. So if you hang back on the pins, spin it around, you'll see it latch in. Another trick, if the patient is not in the wheelchair and you wanna go fast across the parking lot if you're loading in in the car, when the wheelchair is folded up, you can pop a wheelie and be able to push. And the last tip I'd like to show you on wheelchairs is the spacing of the actual wheels. It's called Hemi height. You can actually lower the height of this wheelchair two inches lower to the ground by removing this bolt and inserting it into this axle hole here. On the front fork, you would have to do the same adjustment with those different screws. That would allow a shorter patient to be able to have the chair at a lower height, safer for them to enter and exit the chair. Hope this helps. Here's a couple of tips we would find in the bathroom. This is a bedside commode. We commonly refer to this as a three-in-one due to its three different functions. It can be used as a standalone bedside commode just in the bedroom. You can also remove the bucket from it, which would then allow it to be an elevated toilet seat. And then the third function would be a shower chair. So you could put these back in here, have this down, and it could be a freestanding shower chair as well. This is what we call a transfer bench. Um, you may notice that it is slightly unlevel um, or tilted, and that's because the legs um, that truly fit inside the tub need to be a little bit shorter just because the tub is slightly raised compared to the actual floor. So now once we place that transfer bench inside the tub, it does level itself out. Sorry guys, I just realized halfway through that we are recording in portrait. Let's fix this. Here are a few tips on power wheelchairs or scooters. Most are going to have a yellow latch back here in the back. It has an N or a D, drive or neutral. You can flip that to neutral and be able to push the scooter in freewheel mode without it being on or operating. Now the trick here is if you turn the scooter on while it's in freewheel, it's gonna let you know something's wrong. To correct that, just put it back in drive. You then cannot freely push it. The scooter would then work as it's designed to do. While we're back here, this other little tube on the back of the scooter on your chair, if you have that, it's called a trailer hitch. It's not designed to pull a trailer, but it's designed for accessories that can be uh, utilized with that. A basket, oxygen tank holder, walker holder, cane holder, lots of different varieties of that. Just remember when using this, the overall weight capacity of the scooter is designed for everything that's being held, including the patient and accessories that they have on there. Hope this helps. Now here's a few tips on lift chairs. When you stand up and go to exit your chair, make sure to leave it in this lifted position. That means when you come back to the chair, it makes it a lot easier when going to sit down and recline yourself back. Let the motor do that work. However, if you don't leave it in that lifted position and try to come and sit on it when it's in a flat position, that is putting a lot of pressure on those motors when you're sitting down and plopping in the chair. And one more thing to keep in mind is most of these chairs generally have a battery backup. This is going to allow you to manipulate the chair even when your power may go out. In case of power outages, you always want to have a backup plan. 
if uh, you have a hospital bed that has a single motor system where um, you have the motor in the central portion of the bed, there is generally going to be a little pigtail with two 9 volt battery leads connections on here. Within that, if you had two 9 volt batteries connected there, you would have the option to adjust the bed into a flat position if there were a long term power outage. Another unique tip is the three different ways you can use a bed wedge. You can see this one in an upright position. You can also flip it like this to slightly elevate the head, or you could use it to elevate your legs. Orthopedic shoes have a very unique function. Because they have a completely removable footbed, meaning you can take the entire insole out, Beneath that, you're going to find filler pads, which the filler pad is a small piece of material that can vary in the thickness to allow you to fill more space within the shoe to accommodate people that have a narrow foot. That helps out filling that space. The last and most important tip is to shop local. Find a company near you, which will allow you to go and see the product, get hands on them, and receive recommendations from the staff. And when you buy your loved one a piece of medical equipment, would you rather come in a box with a bunch of parts that they have to put it together? Or would you rather have somebody at a local supply company have the product fully assembled for them, ready to go, teach them how to use it as well? You also need to consider that most local companies are going to work on products that they sell, which would include repair, service, and warranty claims. Shopping local, you're not only going to get the right product fitted for you based on a conversation with an actual person, you're going to get help with the product being assembled. You're going to get help in repair and warranty issues along with service of that same product. But most importantly, we're going to be here to support you in the community and all of your local neighbors. Thanks for watching our tips and tricks video. If you found any of this information helpful and would like to continue to see this type of content, make sure to subscribe down below.